Welcome back to Simple Truth. We're in <coughs> Genesis chapter 41. We are cruising through. Okay, maybe not. We're more like canoeing through or paddle boating through uh, Genesis. We're in chapter 41. I want to pick it up in verse 14. I love this. Love, 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 love this. Because we, uh, we've we been looking at the story of Joseph and we've seen this whole process, this whole journey. Years have gone by. Years and years and years have gone by. Uh, since this poor man, uh, as a young boy, had a dream, a vision of his family bowing down to him, right? And he told his family about this vision, and it just went south really, 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 really quick. I love the practicality of that. It makes me want to go back and re-look at that, right? Because there are times when we give people the vision that God has given for us. We tell them, like, hey, God said this. God's going to do this. God promised this. God, God, God. And they look at us as if we're speaking a totally different language, right? They look at us and immediately, rather than them saying, like, yeah, go ahead, do this, build this, right? Go ahead and be a part of this. Uh, instead, they look at us and they give us a million reasons why this shouldn't be, right? There's no way that that could be from God. He would never ask you to do this stuff. He would never have you do this stuff, right? And again, as soon as we put never with God, uh, now, now we're in a big, big, big problematic moment, right? As soon as we put always with God, we're in a little better ground, right? Because there are things that God says he always does. Right, God always keeps his promises. But when we start saying God will never work that way, then we're in trouble. Because most of us would have assumed, if we were friends of Joseph, we would have assumed that he had done something wrong. Right? You don't become a servant. You don't get sold into slavery. Right? We don't end up in a prison, right? if we've done right things, do we? Like, Don't we only end up in those places when we've done wrong things? Isn't it only that God, God, like, he saves those places who need to be reformed, right? Those people who need to be, you know, fixed. Those people who need to be restored. That's what God does, right? Isn't that why he has prison? We love the stories. Somebody goes to prison, and then they find Jesus in the prison and they come out and they're an evangelist and they go out and they tell their story about how they did whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and then they, you know, like now they're all about Jesus. And we're like, yeah, we spend 20, 30 bucks and we go hear them speak and we support them because their story is just so inspiring and other people. But it's always about other people have to go to prison, right? You have, you have to do something wrong in order to find Jesus. Why is it that we have to do something wrong? To find Jesus. Why, why, why is it that we have to be in the wrong before Jesus really comes to us and gives us a great testimony? Why can't a great testimony be, uh, and he did what God wanted him to do, uh, and she did what God wanted her to do? Why, why can't it be that way? Why is the greatest testimonies, look, look around you, all the Christian testimonies, the greatest testimonies are about people who were completely lost, doing life their own way, and, and then God finds them and he cleans them up. And we love those stories. But what happens with the Samuels of life? What happens with, with Samuel was dedicated by his mom as a baby and grew up in the temple and did right things. He did right things all the way up through. God loved him. God used him from a child. Where, where are those stories? We, we love the stories of messed up people finding Jesus. But, but what if you don't have to be so messed up to find Jesus? And then worse yet, what happens if you get the dream from God, you're in a godly moment, he gives you a testimony, and you're going along and you're doing well, and what happens if you fall? What, what happens if you profess to be a Christian at age 13, 14, 15, 16, 21, and then all of a sudden at age 25, you, you fall? What, what do we do with that then? That's not a good testimony, is it? I mean, somebody professed to be a Christian and be a Christ follower, and then they chose their own way, they did something, and then they fall, and all of a sudden, they're in prison, but now they deserve it. Now it's a punishment because they said they were about Jesus, but they weren't. We can't use those testimonies. But isn't it the same testimony? Doesn't God just restore fallen people? Does it matter if you were pre a Christian or not. The majority of people in our country say that they believe in God. So even if they're out doing their own thing and they say they believe in God, well, wait, wait, doesn't that put them on the same page? So we need to be careful. Who, 
Whose testimony are you using? So notice, Joseph, Joseph gets this in verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. Oh, could preach this for hours and hours. I love this sentence. I'm not going to preach for hours and hours, but I love this phrase, right? There are those of us who have been waiting for God to pick us up. There are those of us who've been waiting for God to do something. There are those of us who've been waiting patiently in prison, whatever that is, right? You can be in prison in relationship. You can be in prison in work. You can be in prison at your house. You can be in prison because you owe taxes. You can be in prison because of medical stuff. You can be in prison all over the place. Prison isn't necessarily this little eight by eight or whatever it is cell, right? Thank goodness I've only ever visited them. I haven't actually been there and that's only by the grace of God, right? Because we all deserve prison for something, right? So we, we look at this and we say, you can be in prison in your mind. Right? There are people right now who are totally in prison over all the stuff that's going on in this world today, right? But God says this, just the right moment, at just the right time, in just the right place, with just the right people surrounding you, I'm going to lift you out of the pit. Like we talked about, what are you doing in the pit? Are you being faithful? Are you being patient? Are you being obedient? Are you, are you doing all the things that God wants you to do while you're waiting in the pit? Are you just constantly pressing the parameters, constantly pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and saying, God, I'm not going to be content here until you get me out of here. And then we're wondering why we're in there a long time, maybe longer than we probably should have been in there, right? Because we're looking at this whole thing and saying, we're just going to press and press and press because I want this, God. I want this. And so I'm going to just keep doing my own thing, right? And then eventually I just get to the line and then you're going to make the line disappear and then it'll just all be okay. Now God finds obedience important. Do you know that up until this very second, Joseph's a prisoner. Oh, it might not look like it, because he's in charge of prison. Because he's helping people out. He might be acting as if he's warden of a prison that he's a prisoner in. Do the math on that. Think about that for a little while, right? Are you the warden? Are you acting as if you're the warden of the prison that you're in? Right? There's another great topic. It sounds like a great reflection topic. Right? But we look at this whole thing and we say, maybe you've created this whole world, this whole thing where you're just you're just trying to pretend that you're not there. But at just the right time, not a second sooner, right? Notice, Joseph asked these two men to not forget him two years earlier. Two years earlier, Joseph says to them, please don't forget me. Please just tell me this is all I want out of this deal. Just tell them. Two years later, a cupbearer looks at Pharaoh and says, I now remember my failing." I now remember what I should have done, what I promised to do, and I didn't do it. Now, we can jump all over the cupbearer and say, man, he made Joseph stand two years, two more years in prison. Here's the truth. If, if Pharaoh had let Joseph out of prison two years earlier, would Joseph have been right in this spot? Well, we know he wouldn't have been. He would have found finding a way to get back to his dad and his brothers. He would have gone full circle back to nothing, back to what it was before with nothing changing. All this stuff that God had done, all the stuff that God was doing to prep, not just for Joseph, but for the saving of his family. Under, understand that. The preparatory here isn't just for Joseph. The prep is for an entire world that Joseph is going to impact. So are you impacting the world? Is, is your prep for impacting the world. There's your prep for you. You see, when you're in the pit and all you're doing is fighting against everything, then you're not getting ready to impact the world. That's my problem in life, right? That's probably your problem in life. So let me finish up with like one half of a verse, right? I'm getting closer and closer to one word. That's my goal. One half of a verse, right? We'll finish up the next on the next time. It says that they brought Joseph out of the pit quickly. Are you waiting for something that you've been waiting for for a long time, begging God, get me out of this pit? And are you thinking that, hey, God's never going to do this, so i got to figure out a way out of it myself. Understand this, that there are moments where God says, no, right time, right place, right people, right condition of your heart, your mind, your soul, and I'll get you out of that pit quickly. 
but it's dependent upon me, not upon you. Notice, Joseph's just being faithful. Joseph just was doing what he was supposed to do. And at the right time, God lifted him out. Right? So I pray that you leave it in God's hands about when you're to get out of the pit. Because if you don't, you're going to waste a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. And you're probably going to prolong your time because God's going to have to clean up the messes that you're making. Right? Be careful. Be obedient. Be watchful. Right? For God to move and get you out of the pit. We'll see you next time. Simple truth.